Hello everyone. I thought I'd throw together a quick video here uh, for you to help get started uh, this semester with CISC 108. Uh, we'll be learning Python this semester, programming. Uh, so there'll be a few things that we need to have installed and that's what we'll start with at the beginning of the week. Uh, but here in this video, I guess I'll really just kind of look over uh, some of the most important and crucial things, you know, like how to get around in Canvas and uh, how to get a hold of me when you need me. Since we're, we are in an asynchronous course, there's a, which means that we don't have uh, any, any designated meeting times, I do have office hours set up. And so I'll show you the office hours and I'll show you around uh, Canvas a little bit so that um, we can we can kind of get moving on. If you have any further questions, you could simply see me during office hours or shoot me an email and uh, we'll go from there. But let's at least get the, the fundamentals down. I'll switch over to my browser here and we'll pick up from there. I didn't click it. There we go. All right. So let's see here. This is 108. Um, this is the home page that you'll see when you log into Canvas. Yours might look a little bit different than mine because, you know, I'm the creator of this, so I have a different view. Um, first off, what I guess I would notice, is, or what you should notice, is that I have this link here to a, what's called Sys108 Hangout. And so that's just a, a Discord group. Uh, in fact, the Sys101, Sys103, 106, and 108 is all the same Discord group. Um, and so I, my idea here is that it, it kind of functions as a virtual lab of sorts. If, if we were on main campus and in the computer science department, uh, they do have a lab. Uh, and, and it's a common lab. So everybody shows up at that lab and um, everybody kind of can work together. And that's what I'm trying to simulate here, I suppose. It's just a lab where all the computer science people hang out, regardless of the course that you're in. Um, hopefully here with this situation, maybe somebody else has already had Sys108 or uh, I wouldn't say eight, but another computer science course that, that maybe you could help or, or understand, um, or, or just your, your, your peers from your own, from Sys108 class could be there too. And you guys could have a place to meet and talk about solutions to the problems that we're trying to solve. <laughs> um, that would be the first thing to note. Uh, I, I don't normally hang out there too much. Uh, maybe I'll pop in here and there, but generally speaking, I think of this as your space, your lab, and I don't really infect that with myself. Uh, if you need to get a hold of me, we, we will start off with, um, I have office hours that we do online. This is the Zoom meeting. So anytime that we're going to meet, whether it's office hours or you and I are just going to set up a, a meeting time, we would go to this link right here, go in Zoom and log in there and we'll meet. And so my designated times here are Tuesday, Thursday, 1230 to 1.30, as you can see. But it's also by appointment. So if if we we can schedule an appointment any almost any time. I mean I have before done it uh, on the weekends, even uh, almost any time, right? After hours, you know, at night. Um depends if you can get a hold of me via email. Here's my email address. And we can set up a time then um in advance of the time that you want to meet then then it's i'm pretty open to times that we need to meet in order to be able to to get going again uh, i will say that a lot of times what, what i normally find in office hours or with this class just in general let me switch back to me is that when you guys need to speak with me outside of what i have posted already i have a lot of videos posted already and they they're i think they're pretty thorough uh, but that doesn't mean that, that you understand everything that we're doing just by watching the video you sometimes need a little bit of help but I, I think a lot of times it does come down to just that a little bit of help you just need a, like a nudge right there's something that's not quite making sense and with a little bit of tweaking that usually starts going again things start going again and and that that's perfect that's the way it should be working in here i i do all my courses in I guess if we're going to speak in academic terms, it would be called problem-based learning. Um, so it's kind of learning while doing or, or from doing, right? It's hands-on. So I, I really think that this works the best. Uh, 
think about your phone, for instance, if you're learning how to use your phone or a new phone, if we had the Moyer phone, it would be a phone that you never used before. It really doesn't work very well if I just lecture to you for an hour and 15 minutes and then let you run off with the phone. What would be better is if you were working on the phone while we were lecturing or talking, right? You, you kind of tinker with the phone as we go along. And so that's kind of the idea uh, of, of the way the courses are running. So um, a lot of times it is just that what you need, be, you get largely what, what's been going on in the video or you, you largely understand what we're doing, what we're working on. You've worked with it for a little bit, but something you're getting hung up on Usually it only takes a brief period of time to, to get you sit, sit you back on track again. Um, although sometimes it's more than that, right? So it can be <laughs> that you're really having a, a pretty serious misunderstanding of, of what's happening in the course, which could require more time. And that's fine too. I'm just saying to you that it's, it's, it's really useful to, even for, for five minutes, right? Just meet up every here and there more regularly for five minutes than one long hour it is often better, I think. Because we don't let these things, these little problems uh, accumulate, I guess, uh, build up and, and then it becomes something really big. If we could just knock them out while they're small still, <laughs> that's that. it's more efficient to do it that way. So let's get back here to uh, Canvas. So we'll, we'll use my office hours for that, and we're by appointment. Like I said, it can only just be for a couple minutes. Maybe we want to meet, I don't know, Friday at 2 or so. I don't know, Saturday at 2. Could work out fine for both of us, just for 10 minutes. No big deal. It gets you moving again. I think that's very useful. Uh, I think we should take advantage of that, definitely. Now, in Canvas here, you won't see all of these on the side uh, because these are all hidden, right, because uh, I'm not using them. Uh, but you will see these that are that are not that do not have the line through them, the eyeball with the line through them. And the way I like to view the course um, and all of my courses, which all work the same way or all laid out the same way, um, is by is through the modules. So I clicked on modules. There's a number of ways for you to see the content of the course. Could be through the calendar, could be through the to do list or something like that. Uh, but the, the modules, I I don't know. I like them best. I they, it doesn't matter to me how you do it. It's just the way I do it. So there's modules for, there's a module for each of the weeks, right? Week one, two, three that we're in, in, in school here. And so there's a total of 14 modules. There's 14 weeks. And so what you would do is just, uh, you, you can see them all on my screen because again, uh, my, my view is different than yours. But for you, you'll, you'll see, for right now, you'll see week one, but just be aware that there's other ones coming. Every week there's going to be another set of them. So what you would do is uh, you just start at the top and you do them in line, right? There's typically they're, they're in this order for a reason because you kind of want to go in that order. And, and, and for that reason, the fact that they should be ordered, you should be doing them in a particular order. Um, I, ha I have attached something called a to do, to dash, T-O dash D-O, to do, date because as you'll see, it's August 29th and August 30th. I knew I want them to come in that order. And if I don't put that date, then I know that Canvas doesn't necessarily put them in the order that I've put them in when it displays them in the to-do list or on the calendar. And so they can get jumbled. They can get out of order in other views. So I've put this to-do date on there, not because it's D-U-E, do at that time, but maybe it'd be nice if you started it at that time. But more so, if I could just number them, <laughs> I would. But this is just the only way I have to keep them in this order. So, and you know, they're approximately right. The, the date that matters most is in the, in the series of events or, or, or things that we're doing throughout the week, this particular module, the last one is the submittable or deliverable, as you would say. And it has... Uh, a due date. I mean, yeah, it's that that D U E date. That's not a to do. I meant be a to do as well, but it's also a due date, D U E. Um, and you 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 can kind of see that because of the fifty points here, also because and these don't have points, right? And um, this icon's a little different than the other ones. 
So there's a way to tell, but I'm telling you the real way to tell is just it's the last one of the series. And that'll be the case for every one of them. And so I've these assignments, I've just named them by the week. Kind of corresponds to the module name, right? Week two, week three. So these will be things that you want to submit, and what you'll submit is a file. So you're gonna we're gonna use a piece of software that um, an IDE integrated development environment that allows us to write Python code, uh, kind of like uh, we use Word to write a document, a text document, or an essay for another for some class. Uh, you need a piece of software to write that, in, right? And so here we need a piece of software to write this code in that can execute that code. And so we're going to be we'll be using an IDE, and you you'll write your code up. Um, you can execute the, in, in as many times as you want, make as many modifications as you want, and eventually you'll have something that you're satisfied with, hopefully. And that file will be saved on your computer. You save that just like you save a Word doc. And so we want to submit that file that you saved. So there'll be more details as we come along in week one. Yeah, we'll just look at week one and see if I have anything. There. Again, my, my view is going to look a little different than yours. Mm. Well, in, in Word, I think we've all used Word, so I use that as an example. It creates files that have something called a file extension. Uh, so it would be like if you're creating a resume, resume.docx.docx. Uh, these this IDE is going to create one with .py, so you know that's your Python program, right? So that's what you want to submit. So you want to just be cognizant of where you're saving that, so you'll be able to find it again, right? Because you're going to upload it, just like you would submit a, a, a Word file. You just submit this thing. This could be my week one. You, I don't know. You call it whatever you want, but that might be a, a good name for it. Week one, <laughs> and it'll get saved as week one dot py that's the file you want to upload and your screen here when you look at week one it's going to have a way to upload i think here right i don't see that but oh i could look at student view probably it's the first i think it's the first time i've ever yeah uh, there's start assignment i guess that's what that means we would do that but you you're not going to start the assignment right here you're you're going to um Oh, maybe you would. Maybe you would. Well, it'll be interesting. I'll just do it. I'll just look at it and see. Oh, yeah. Okay. And there's the upload. This is the first time I've seen this. Sorry, guys. Submit assignment, and I'm sure a box is going to pop up here so I can choose something. Oh, I was supposed to attach something there. Choose file. Here it is. Sorry. I'm all over the place. Choose file, and a pop up box is going to come that I would select that file, right? And then it'll, it'll appear in my list, and then I'll submit it. Interesting. I wonder if this is exactly how you see it. I, I probably it might be. I don't know what I'm doing there. Yeah. Well, I, I didn't mean to go through that whole thing with you guys. Oh, I don't want to be in student view anymore. That's what it is. So now I may have messed this up a little bit while I try to figure this out. Hold on one second. Let's see if. And apparently I can't pause the recording, so we're going to have to do it together. We are back in modules. Whatever, that's fine. I'm just looking at it in your view, I guess. That's fine. So we'll just run through week after week, um, collecting assignments that then would go into the gradebook as they get graded. Um, yep, yeah. and you'll be able to see your grades. So I, you see, I'm glad we looked at it in your, your view because it is different than mine. Yeah, you can see all of your grades throughout the semester. All the labs have 50 points that they're worth. There's a midterm worth 100 points. It's 25% of your grade. And the final worth 20, 100 points, just 25%. And all of those 50s, all of those uh, lab assignments, the sum of those is worth um, 50%. So that, that equals, that sums to 100%. The two 25s and a 50. So each one of those, each one of these weak assignments 
is just a, uh, a fraction of the 50%. So looks like some of them aren't showing. I'll figure out why that is later. It's no big deal. Let's go to the syllabus. You know, these are your available lines here. And the only thing I really was concerned about, or not concerned about, see, it does a list of all the things like a to-do list. That might be one way for you to look at it as well, look at things, although you don't see the, no, it does show the to-dos too. To-do is different than do by, right? That's an assignment right there, graded assignment. This is just a to-do. It's not graded, but we do want it to be in that order, right? So this one comes before this one. And that's why I have to have the to-do date on there so that they stay in that order. But syllabus itself, which everyone's always concerned about, we're, we're going to be concerned, not rightfully, rightfully concerned about that. We'll go over it here real quick. And I think the, the main thing that we want to think about is the grades, the assessment, right? So as, as I just mentioned by looking at the grade one, we were looking at the grade book, uh, the midterm project. We'll do a project. I, I, I think, well, I can't guarantee a project here. It might be just a midterm. Projects can be tough in this class a little bit. 108. I'll try to do a project for the midterm and the final, but we may wind up having to do just like questions, right? In any case, the midterm is worth 25% and the final is worth 25%, whether it's project or whether it's just questions. And the labs are 50%. You notice there's a lot of labs. So each lab is not worth 50% of your final grade. Each one of those labs is worth a fraction of 50%. So from this layout, you can see that there's no single grade that can destroy you. So you could, for instance, I don't want to, I hope that nobody does this and I don't want to see it, but <laughs> I don't want to see this happen, but you could drop that all together in the term, right? And you'd still have 75% as long as you've got everything else. So the mid, missing the midterm all, by itself can't do anything. Missing the final by itself can't destroy you. Of course, missing both of them is going to hurt. Uh, missing any individual lab assignment is not going to destroy it, right? It's going to be one fraction. I think there should be probably 12 of them. So it'll be one twelfth of 50% for an individual lab. It's nothing extraordinary. It might look bad in your grade book when Canvas is calculating the final grade based on one exam, one, one grade. But, um, Um, as the semester progresses, those will straighten themselves out, right? As more and more grades come on to, uh, into the book. Uh, but no single grade can destroy you, right? That's, that's the important part that I want you to, or was trying to get across to you. So you don't need to get crazy about anything, um, about any individual grade, although we don't want to miss a midterm and we don't want to miss a final. I mean, that's a pretty big hit, right? It, it won't destroy you, but it's a big, it, it'll hurt. Midterm and final, whether it's grade or project, is go, whether it's a project or question, right? Standard kind of question, answer questions. Um, they have firm due dates. And by that, what I mean is there's no late submission of these things. So there, there will be several days to do it, both the midterm and the, and the final as they approach. But those due dates are firm, and they have a due date and time, and the time is firm. Midterm, for instance, is on a Friday, right? And the due date on that midterm is 5 p.m. Now, I'm bringing this up because it's different than the labs. The labs are always Sunday night at midnight. Right? And, but I don't have so much flexibility with the midterm because mid, midterm grades are due Friday at midnight. That's the end of the semester. So we can't push it till Sunday at midnight where the university is going to be streaming. So I have to be able to get the grades in before midnight on Friday. So I need them in with enough time to be able to answer them, right? Grade them and enter them. So... Um, that's going to get a little bit out of your normal sequence. So you're going to get accustomed to submitting something every Sunday before Sunday at midnight. 
but just realize that the midterm and the final are different in that respect, right? Because there's we have university requirements there. There's there's nothing. The university doesn't require us to do anything each and every week. There are certain points when we have to do something, like the midterm and the, the semester ends. Right? We can't go on beyond that. So uh, the final project, is, the final is going to be the same way. I think I have it set up to go um, on the last day of final exam schedule. Right. So there's just simply no more time. The semester is over, and the grades. And once again, the grades. I have, I have to put the grades in. So it can't get extended, and it doesn't fall on a Sunday at midnight. These things don't. These two things don't. So just be aware of that, and and don't kind of. Don't let yourself fall into thinking that it's in every single case of all times, it's always Sunday at midnight. These two instances, it's not the same. Right? It's a little different. All right, we don't do any extra credit. Let's just get that out in the open right off the bat. If you're missing things, it's, you're just missing them. We, just, we can't do anything about that. Uh, and there's no makeups for exams or, or, or other work either, right? Like, there's no coming in in July, well, I was going to say July, but uh, I'll say February, saying I missed the final and I got to make that up. It's like, that's just not going to happen, right? That's not right. Um, and there is no time. It's due at, at the last minute, right? There is no more time. When that due date hits, it's over. Uh, it's over, not just for you, for me too. It's all over. When the midterm time hits, there is no more time. You see what I'm saying? With the labs, there is a little more time. And so there's a little leeway with them as well. I guess I could go ahead and mention that real quick since we're talking about the times. They are due Sunday at midnight, but I do let that run, but with a penalty. I let those, you can submit those labs late. They're penalized at 5% per day, which means um, five points per day. This means that the maximum days late would be 10 days, right? Because that would be 10 times 5 is 50. And they're worth 50 points. So you will have lost 50 points in 10 days. But nonetheless, you, you can turn them in late if you want. If you're a day late or something, you'll just lose 5 points. But that's what I would hope to see, is that we would only be a day or, day or two late. Or, or zero days late. But, but these final and midterm... Again, they differ from the labs. The final midterm, there, they, there is no five, five point penalty. There is no further on, right? When they're late, they're done. They're over. There's no makeups. Just like it's always been, right? There's no difference with these two units here. This midterm and this final. They're firm on their due dates. So there's no extra credit. There's no. Uh, making them up i mean i can't do extra credit because i'm not it's not like i'm going to make up new projects for somebody right it's it, it is what it is and and furthermore we know that the, the the labs any individual assignment there's no single one of them that's going to destroy you anyway so what would happen if you were failing the course uh, i'll just paint the scenario i hope that this is not going to happen i'm looking for everybody to get an a but if you were failing the course just the math here shows that an argument like, oh, I missed the midterm, so I failed the course, is in the valid, right? Because if you miss the midterm, and that's the only thing, which is what you're implying, is that you missed the midterm, then you would still have a 75 in the course. So it must be that you did, you missed more than that. You see what I'm saying? It, it's the only way you could fail this course is by developing a pattern of not turning things in or being wrong, uh, uh, not being able to complete the, the assignments. I guess that we're just gonna, for whatever reason, either it's not working, it's not right, or it's not turned in. For some reason, you're getting zeros on stuff, for whatever reason that might be. That's the only way. And it, had to be, it has to have been a number of things. It wouldn't be, it wouldn't work for it to just be one, two, three things. Even four. Look, if there's 12 assignments, in order for you to get only half credit, you could miss 12, right? Because that would be that would mean instead of getting 50% of your grade from labs, only 25 would be coming. As long as you did the midterm and final and did well, you'd still get a 75 in the class. 
So from, from, from many, many different ways, uh, all I can see here is that it's, it's actually difficult to fail. And so when you, if, if, if you get to the end of the semester and you find yourself in a failing position, that it must be, and I hope that we're not going to see anybody like this, right? Let's just give it that as a, 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 pre, a preemptive with, with that. But I, I don't want to see anybody failing here. But if you are, then you must have missed a number of things. It couldn't be that you're going to present an argument that I missed a couple labs and now I failed. That, that can't be. I mean, I just showed you. If you just missed a couple, if you missed half of them, you'd still get a 75 in the class. So it must be that you missed more than that. And I'm, I'm only kind of harping on this a little bit because I, I get this argument a lot. Well, I only, I only missed just a little bit. Well, that's not possible. Right? It's, it's just not mathematically possible to miss just one thing or two or a couple and fail. You can't do that. Mathematically, it's not. It's like saying two plus two is twelve, right? It's just not possible. So we, we don't need that argument that um, or that that, that that way of trying to correct something that I only just missed a few things. I slipped up a little bit. It's not. It, it's systematic. If you failed the course, you've systematically done some horrible stuff. I don't want to say horrible. It's not really horrible. You just didn't turn things in. Just leave it at that. All right, so the, the labs can be turned in late, but there'll be a five five point penalty. Right, uh, must be submitted. So we're not submitting links here. So this is kind of just left over from something else that I had been working on on this, or some previous work in in um, in Sys one hundred eight before we we changed it into all online. There were other things that we were doing. Uh, but everything has to be submitted in Canvas, that is for sure. Uh, I'm not accepting any emails that have programs in them, uh, even if it's coming as an attachment, unless it's something that we've decided to, together through a discussion, maybe during office hours or something, we said, just, just send me it in an email. Uh, it, things things just get lost that way. It's, it's way too confusing. Uh, there's no way to keep track of emails. They, they're, they're gone all over the place. Uh, so the Canvas, Canvas keeps things organized, and that's the way we need it. There's a lot of programs coming in. Each one of you has a lot of programs, and then there are a lot of you on top of that across numerous classes. right? It gets super with trying to, to, to manage that in, in email is, is really rather challenging. Right? It's, it's super easy to lose stuff in email. So it needs to be submitted through Canvas by the due date, right? I think I've spoken enough about this now. I guess I could touch on academic dishonesty. Um, <clears throat> for me, if we're talking about cheating, it's a matter of, to me, it's a matter of intent. So if you're intent, if, if I'm working with a peer, oh, let me switch back to me here. If I'm working with one of my classmates or peers on some sort of project, then, I mean, right off the bat, I'm, I'm insinuating here that, that I'm working with them. So we're working together, at trying to achieve a common goal. A little bit here right we're trying to figure out the solution and we're both trying and to do that we're both thinking and moving forward with the intent of completing this project and the intent of learning what we're doing um, that's markedly different than me asking my peer for a copy of their code so that i could submit that and get a grade even though i have no idea what i'm doing right I mean, I think this is obvious if we think about that. I don't think it's a stretch <laughs> to imagine that if, if I turn in something and claim it's my own and it's not, I didn't write it, I have no idea what I'm doing with it, that that is going to be met with um, some negative action. 
<laughs> say. That is not right. You can't do it that way. But I don't expect if, if I'm working with uh, one of my peers and we're putting together something, uh, some kind of uh, solution we're coming up with, we're solving this problem together, then that's a different story. You see, my intention is different. I'm not trying to, to take someone else's work and submit it as my own. I'm working with someone with the common goal uh, of the solution to the problem. Like, that is different. That's markedly different. So, I, I mean, I've, I've even set up that Discord group for you guys because I want you to work together, right? So I'm, I'm asking you to work together. So expect that you're going to be talking about the same projects together, the same problems, the same issues that you're having. Now, I'm going to expect to see solutions that are at least similar, right, to problems that, that you're going to. Um, but I do not expect for one person to write the code and then pass it out to everybody else. That That's not right. Okay, so I mean that's I'll just explain what my my, my uh, the last I can do with that is just kind of explain my position on on what I would consider cheating. Uh, and so if you're submitting someone else's work as your own, then that's cheating. All right? Um, if you're working with someone on a common solution that you're trying to come up with, then that is not cheating. And I would encourage you to do that. Work together. Try to learn how to do it. That's okay. Just don't take someone else's work and say that it's yours. All right, so I think we're actually through this. I don't want to really harp on that. You'll never hear me talk about academic dishonesty again. I'm not going to talk about the grades anymore unless you ask me. Uh, these are all the things we're going to be trying to do in, in the course as we go through, but it boils down to uh, Python. We're learning the program in Python using an IDE that's free. And <laughs> I'm using a, a text an online text that also is uh, free. Come back to me as I wrap this up. I'm, I'm also using an online text uh, that, that is free, and because it's free, and, and it's good, it's well-known text. It covers introductory programming courses all cover pretty much kind of the same topics. There's a there's a number of topics that, that one has to know about in any programming that they're doing, whether it's Python or C or Java, or it doesn't matter the language that you're using, you still have to know what a loop is, uh, what a, a selection structure is. So they're all kind of formatted the same way. And so this one is formatted in the same way as all the other ones, um, but it's online and it's free. So <laughs> we're going to use that one. And the IDE is free as well, That the software that we're going to use. So we'll start off week one with... Um, installing the, the software that we need to use and um and then we'll go from there uh, i will be available on tuesday and thursday as stated on the the home page on on canvas and um I, mean, I guess that's all i've got for you at the moment i hope that's enough to kind of bootstrap you and get this going uh if it's not and and, and heck you could just stop by anyway on tuesday and we'll just kind of say hi um but otherwise, I'll see you Tuesday or Thursday, and we'll just keep on moving through the modules. All right. Have a good evening and a good uh, start of class.